Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alicia and I'm the owner of Alicia Be Creative. Today we are going to be using some 3D products from Sculptistry and I'm gonna show you how to create this cute sweater inspired fall tumbler. So of course, everything that I use today will be listed and linked down in the description box as well as any discount codes that I have for you to save you a little bit of extra money. But let's go ahead and jump right into today's tutorial. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start with our tumbler and all of the supplies we're gonna be using today. So as I mentioned, I of course will list all the items down in the description box and links to where you can purchase them and any discount codes that I have for you to save some money. So to start, we're gonna take this 14 ounce tumbler that I purchased from Makerflow and we're gonna go ahead and sand the surface of this so that we can get the surface of this cup prepped so any sanding block grit will work sandpaper also works if you have other um, items that will help you prep your surface like coverall from crystal Act, lots of other products that you can use if you do not prefer to sand to prep your tumblers so what i am doing right now is these sweater sort of like 3d pieces are from sculpture tree you get a pack of a, i think it's 14 it might be more than 14 but what i'm doing is i am making them um, sort of like inverting them every other and then I'm going to tape them all together so that I did that with the last few that I needed to do and you're going to see that I already have the rest of the row of them sort of ready to go I'm just going to attach these last four or five to the end of that line there and then this is just going to help me keep these as straight as possible possible as I make sure that this is going to fit all the way around so these are technically sized for a whiskey bent tumbler from mother tumbler but i don't have that cup and so there's no reason though why i still can't use this and what i loved about this was that after i had finally like decided that i really wanted to use these like stent these like 3d sweater pieces i was like well what else can i put in sort of this gap should i you know do some clay and you know try and mimic the rest of the pieces should I order more pieces and then I remembered that I have this cute little leaf handle that Jessica over at Sculpture Street had sent as well and I'm like this would be perfect to put together so we're going to use that handle to place in that open and empty space so to adhere these you could use a various amount of things I'm going to go ahead and use um, UV resin because it's going to get me the quickest sort of securing of these 3d sweater pieces onto my tumbler here so I've just moved on a thin layer of that UV resin just enough to make the slip the surface slippery but not so much that when I apply those sweater pieces that everything's going to start kind of you know sliding all over the place then I'm going to take my taped together pieces and I'm going to lay those across the tumbler very carefully, keeping that tape there, which is going to keep these all secured. And then we're going to go ahead and cure this under our UV lamp. So this was a little bit tricky. Um, once I was able to kind of get it around, so to speak, I felt like it was a little bit easier to maneuver, but you can see that some of them didn't exactly um, stay down. And I think it was just not having enough UV resin under those sections, but I had cured the first initial go of this where most of these stuck for about 120 seconds just to ensure that everything stuck down and then I'm going to go in and come back and replace the two that had come off that didn't have enough UV resin to grip them and get them to stay now you could use super glue you could use like a two-part epoxy like a Bob Smith's or something like that B7000 sort of whatever you would choose to adhere your clay pieces to you could also use to adhere these sweater pieces to your cup too so we're going to go ahead and get these last few pieces on and once I've gotten those on, I'm just going to make sure that they're all secure, that there aren't any gaps, any gaps that I did find, I did end up going in with that UV resin under some of the edges of these pieces, just to make sure that they were adhered and they were flush against the cup. I didn't want to have any gaps in things, places where epoxy could get pulled under there and make it just not look how I'm envisioning it to look. So now that we have this ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and take a minute here and we're gonna switch gears to sort of prep our leaf handle. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this over the spray tent and I am going to spray paint that with that light brown color from Rust-Oleum. I'll link that color down in the description box. And while we are waiting for that to dry, we're gonna go ahead and mix two of the colors together to create the color that I envisioned that gives me fall sweater vibes. So I'm taking Nugget from Bella Nieve Creations 
and I'm taking Vintage from Peachy Olive Glitters and I am mixing these two colors together, which is gonna give me the perfect mix of copper and like a light gold, which is exactly what I envisioned when I think about like a beige brown sweater. So we're just gonna mix equal parts of that until I feel I have enough for the amount of glitter that I'll need for the cup. Mix that thoroughly and we end up with this absolutely beautiful mix. I really love how pretty this mix came out and I ended up using the rest of this to make like a little coaster and a little tumbler tag because I just loved how pretty that color was. So back to our tumbler here, I did go ahead and put this on the turner. Now you're probably asking me why I'm doing this. Why am I epoxying now when I don't have any color on it? So the reason I wanted to epoxy this now is I wanted to ensure that my 3D sweater pieces were very much adhered and that I wasn't gonna have any issues when I go into glittering this. So I'm gonna do a thin coat of epoxy. This is just gonna make sure that these pieces are really tacked down, they're really stuck to the cup, they're not going anywhere and they are permanent. You do not have to do this if you are pretty secure that your pieces are good to go. Go ahead and spray paint and glitter right over top of this. I just wanted that additional sort of peace of mind to know that all of my pieces are adhered to the cup and nothing's going to come loose somehow. <laughs> so this also helped, I think, fill in some of those gaps in between the pieces, uh, in between like the sweater pieces so that it makes it a little bit easier when I'm adding the glue and glitter for the glitter to kind of adhere without kind of giving that sunken look. So I wanted to be able to see the sweater look, but I didn't want sort of the pieces, the glitter pieces to kind of fall in the cracks if that makes sense. I wanted to kind of still be that top layer, but not kind of look sunken in some areas. So after I did that layer of epoxy, it was a very thin coat. We're gonna go ahead and take this back over to our spray tent and we're going to get this spray painted. So I'm using like a uh, an off-white color and I'm using that same color that I used on the handle. Again, can't remember the colors, of course, for the recording of this, but I will list those down in the description box. But we're gonna do this with like a double ombre kind of look. Um, we're gonna use the brown for the top and bottom and then I'm gonna go in the center and create that sort of burst look. So like a bursted looking ombre with that lighter color sweater section, uh, that light beige color. So after I've gotten this spray sprayed and painted, we're gonna go ahead and just let that dry for a bit before we move on to the next step here. So now that this is dry, we can go ahead and we can apply our glitter. I'm gonna use Mod Podge. We have the custom color glitter that we've already put together. And I'm also gonna be using Pandora from Batty Glitter which is like technically a white, but it's more like an off-white cream color. And so I knew it would be perfect to add on top of this sort of beige color in the center to enhance that color, but also of course, give it a bit of sparkle and shine without having to go with a, you know, a pure white glitter. So applying a decent coat of Mod Podge because Mod Podge tends to like to dry on me really quickly. We're gonna do a pretty thick coat here. This is gonna cover up some of those imperfections, some of the misalignment from the sweater pattern and really fill in those holes in section in between the pieces. And then we'll get to glittering here. So we're gonna start with the uh, chunkier of the two glitters we're using, which is the mix we created. That's gonna go on the bottom and the top. And I am slightly angling my cup up and downward you'll see to get just a little bit of that sort of on the very edges of the actual sweater pieces that are on the cup just to give this more of that ombre look like i did with the spray paint i didn't want it to look like two very contrasting lines and sections i wanted it to have a nice pretty blend then we'll go in with pandora from batty glitter and we'll cover up that entire middle section and blend very nicely into the top and bottom darker chunky sections so she's looking good so far. I am thrilled with how she is coming out. And now that this is glittered, we're gonna set her aside and go back to our leaf handle and start working on this. So this 3D printed leaf handle is absolutely adorable. And I love that it had the veining on the inside of the leaf. And I knew right away after spray painting it that I wanted to figure out how I could fill in that with some additional color. I felt like it would look weird to just have it spray painted and not have the sort of very um, obvious veining filled in with something. I tried to do paint pens and realized like I didn't have fine enough tips to get in there and it just didn't look right. Um, so I decided that we would add a little bit of glitter to this. So I've mixed up some UV resin 
and I've gone ahead and put that custom glitter mix we created at the beginning and mixed just a little bit of that in there, enough that it's not going to change the consistency of the UV resin, but enough so that you can very much see that this has got glitter in it. I then, because the veining kind of leads out to where it adheres to, where it will adhere to the cup, I wanted to make sure none of the UV resin kind of dripped off the sides. So I just put a piece of painter's tape there to keep it all in there so that it would all stay within the veining sections and not leak out over the sides and have a mess. So we're gonna take our time here, taking our popsicle stick and just filling in very carefully with very small sections of UV resin to fill in that entire veined section of the leaf handle. We'll go ahead and cure this. We can remove the tape at this point and I'm already loving how beautiful this handle is coming together. So we're not quite done with the handle. We're gonna do a couple additional things here. I decided I wanted to spruce this up. I knew that I didn't wanna glitter the handle cause the cup was already glittered and I felt like it would be a little bit too much and too kind of, I feel like the handle wouldn't stand out enough It was if it was also completely glittered. So we're gonna add a little bit of some foil flakes to the back here in the copper color. So I'm gonna take some tacket here and I'm gonna spread that tacket on the back of this leaf handle with a paintbrush. I then will let this dry. I took my just little handheld fan and dried this for a few minutes. And then we're gonna go ahead and apply our, uh, our leaf, our leaf foil here, foil leaf <laughs> um, in the color copper. So we're just gonna lay sort of like those flat sheets out there and lay them over the, the back of this here until the entire back where all the glue is and it's nice and tacky is completely covered. Now that this is completely covered, I'm gonna take a dry brush, something that is you know small enough and kind of um, sturdy enough bristle wise to be able to brush off all of the all of the foil that's not actually stuck to any of the glue and leave behind everything that is stuck to that glue. So just taking that sort of harder brush there to just brush off and sort of burnish down all of that foil, which is gonna give us this really beautiful textured foil look on the back side of this leaf handle. So I'm loving the back already. And so the final thing just to put this together is we're gonna take a little bit of like, this is called rose gold paint. I bought it from Michaels or Hobby Lobby forever ago. I will try and find it on Amazon and link it down in the description box. But I wanted to just outline the edges of the leaf handle as well. So I just took that paint and literally painted the edges. You could do the same with just a paint pen too. I just didn't have one in a color that I absolutely loved and matched. So I decided to go in with the paint. So we set our handle to dry. Now our cup is ready to come off the turner after two coats of epoxy. I did use Flynn Sister Supply Shop, our, um, Flynn Sister Supply Shop Fast Set to get my two coats of epoxy done rather quickly. And now we're gonna get into my least favorite part of the process, of course, which is sanding. So we're gonna sand down that top rim, make sure to expose, of course, that fine line of stainless steel and sort of, you know, scuff down and sand down anything that's rough. Now I don't wanna do too much sanding on here where we're gonna lose the textured feel of the actual 3D pieces, but enough that we're gonna knock down any pokey bits of glitter or anything that, you know, will kind of still continue to stick through our layers of epoxy if we don't take care of it. But now that we're getting ready to do our final layers of epoxy, we do wanna make sure that we are adhering our handle now at this point. So I'm gonna take some UV resin here and I'm just going to line that UV resin along the handle and then we'll cure this for 120 seconds, switching back and forth between both sides until it's fully cured and secure. So our handle is secured and the very last thing we're gonna do for this cup, of course, is we're gonna get into our final coat of epoxy, final coats of epoxy, I should say. We're not gonna do a decal or anything on this cup um, because it would be a little bit difficult to try and apply, you know, sort of a vinyl to this textured cup. If this was a longer cup or a, um, a taller cup that we had used, then maybe we could have done some fine, like a fine sweater weather um, decal in gold on the darker glittered section. That would be really pretty now that I'm thinking about it. But that section at the top and the bottom was just a little bit too small to really put anything. So we're gonna go without a decal. I feel like this cup speaks for itself. It's got a really beautiful look. It's got that beautiful textured feel. You can tell this is a sweater on a cup. And so for our final coat of epoxy, coats of epoxy, I should say, we're gonna go in with a paintbrush. And this is just really gonna ensure we get into all those nooks and crannies and make sure that this is fully sealed. You will see me go into with my hands for the top and bottom sections which of course are a little bit smoother and easier to um, get that epoxy to cover. But I thought for my final coats, especially with this handle, I wanted to make sure that I ensured I got that 
all those edges of that handle completely covered in epoxy, which is not easy to do when you've got really big fingers <laughs> on such a small item. So we're gonna go ahead and just finish this up adding that final layer of epoxy. This took two final coats of epoxy to finish up before it was ready. And we are using Flint Sister Supply Shop Artist Cure, which is going to give this that beautiful shine as always. If you have not tried this epoxy, definitely go ahead and check it out. I will link that down in the description box as well as a discount code to help you save a little bit of money with your purchase. So that is kind of it for today's tutorial. This came out so cute and just screams fall. It actually makes me so excited and ready to get my fall sweaters out now that the weather is finally turning a little bit colder. But you guys will have to let me know what you thought about today's tutorial down in the comment section down below. And be sure to come back next Saturday for another tutorial. See you guys then.